We will now begin the City of Boynton Beach City Commissioner's Meeting today, Tuesday, August 7th, 2018. Would everyone please rise for an invocation followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Dear God, we uh, thank you for bringing us here today to make a better Boynton Beach. Um, we've had a, a great time being here as the commission, and we wish to continue our efforts to making the best Boynton Beach possible. Uh, we ask for you to pray over us to do what's right and to make everyone a little bit better for our decisions. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. May I have a roll call, please? Mayor Stephen Grant. Here. Vice Mayor Christina Romulus. Present. Commissioner Justin Katz. Commissioner Mac McCray. Here. Commissioner Joe Casello. Here. All present. All right. Any additions, deletions, or corrections to the agenda? Mayor, I have one. Could you yes. add to legal, that's uh, section 12, um, a G, my request to you for a closed door session regarding the quant one of the Quantum Park uh, pieces of litigation with secured holdings. Okay. Thank you. Mayor, could yeah. we pull uh, on the legal B and bring it up into on the new business? Yes. And so we'll put that as item 11D. Yep. We're not pulling consent items yet. If you'd like, we can do it now. Yeah, let's do it now. I would like to pull C, E, E as in Edward, G, H, and M. <laughs> I'll ask again before consent agenda. Any other additions, corrections to the agenda? Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor state so by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Agenda is approved unanimously. Informa informational items by members of the city commission. Commissioner Katz, would you like to begin? Um, I have nothing to report. Commissioner McCray? I have nothing to report, but I'd like to say congratulations. Thank you for praying tonight. You are a newlywed, sir. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we do a lot of that. <laughs> Vice Mayor? Um, I have nothing to disclose, uh, but I do also want to congratulate you, Mayor. Uh, it's a very happy and sometimes difficult journey that you're embarking on, but I wish you the best. And uh, I, uh, after eight years of being married, uh, it's the best decision I ever made, so I hope you have the same um, success. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Commissioner Casello. I'll do all that, uh, Mayor. Congratulations and all the best, long and happy life together. Uh, also, I'd just like to say, uh, to remind you, uh, the primary is coming up this August 28th, so please, uh, some of you must have already got your ballots if uh, voting by mail, get them in there. Uh, early voting will be starting uh, next week, I believe. Uh, so uh, make sure we do our constitutional duty. So thank you. And uh, can, all right. As for me, yes, uh, I did get married this past uh, July. Um, and then I went to the quarterly orientation on Friday for new hirees. Um, we had a honeymoon. We drove up to Maine and back with our dogs. Um, then uh, I attended the Metropolitan Planning Organization's Advisory Council. Um, there's 21 Metropolitan Planning Organizations in the state of Florida, and this is an advisory council that helps them uh, have a unified voice dealing with the uh, Florida legislature and federal legislature dealing with uh, the gas tax dollars. Um, on August 4th, I attended the House of King of Worship's first annual uh, Back to School Bash and the Youth Empowerment Conference. On August 6th, I went to Cross Point Elementary for their new teacher breakfast, and I completed the town square signing of the, the bond documents and all the different lease agreements, and uh, we're very excited for the bonds to be issued this week. Yes, sir. We, we did the pre-closing today and did all of our signatures, and then the closing will occur Thursday morning. Okay. So I look forward to that email saying that we got mm -hmm. the money. Um, and then today, um, Secret Garden had their 
culinary job fair um, where I w myself and Vice Mayor were celebrity chefs doing a, kind of a beat the Bobby Flay. They had a mystery chef from South Tech Academy. Um, my chef name was Chef Cheesy, and I actually <laughs> tied with uh, <laughs> Chef Jeff uh, Davidson, our deputy uh, fire chief, um, for my French uh, yucca. <laughs> and that is it for information. Is there anything else from the commission? Seeing none, moving on to announcements. First announcement is by Director of Public Works, Andrew Mack. Good evening, Andrew Mack, Director of Public Works. Uh, um, as the, the city manager and the mayor said, we're excited that the town square project's kicking off. And uh, a few announcements that uh, sit, the city is gonna be making on our temporary moves to our new locations. Um, the customer service uh, will be moving on August 17th, the, actually closing on August 17th, and will open on Monday, August 20th at their new location, which is 209 North Seacrest Boulevard. Um, and I believe all this will be on the web, and Eleanor will be passing out flyers as well. As well, there'll be signs up posted at City Hall at the site as well. Um, development and permitting will be closing closed on August 31st, Friday, and they will reopen on Tuesday, September 4th at the new location where Temp City Hall is, is 3301 Quantum Boulevard. Uh, Police Department records and internal affairs will be closed on September 23rd and will reopen on September 24th at their new location, <coughs> which is 209 North Seacrest Boulevard. And as you know, the City, Hall, City Library closed on July 12th Thursday, July 12th, and we are uh, scheduled to reopen on Monday, August 13th. <coughs> and that's all the current moves that we have. Okay? And we'll have something on the social media with all these Absolutely. dates and times. And, and this is on the, and the reminders. currently on the city's website, and I'm sure Eleanor will be tweeting out through social media as well as we'll be passing out flyers to our customers and signs in the lobby as well out in the parking lot. And are, are we having uh, some sort of celebration for the last meeting in the city hall? That, that I'd have to defer to, to all Eleanor. Right. We, have, we haven't planned one, but we can okay. talk well, then about we, it. That's yeah. all right. We don't need one. But. We'll be, yeah, um, we'll also be putting notes, uh, notices in the utility bills. Okay. About the moves and new addresses for, and so for September. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes, Commissioner McCray. Th thank you, a Andrew. In regards to um, the library, will there be a sign placed on that building down there? Because when I pass by, it says the United Church. Yes, we're currently working on that. Okay. Yes. Okay. Got to go through our sign ordinance. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got to get permit. <laughs> So let's hopefully it takes doesn't take eight months. Yep. All right. Okay. Thank you. Announce upcoming Sarah Sims Project Park Project Fender Fair, Vendor Fair on August eighth, two thousand eighteen. Is that it? Anyone speaking about that? I I yep. can. I didn't. Oh, no, we got yeah. David. Oh, David. Okay. You're coming down. Good evening, Commissioner Mayor. Um, David Scott, Department of Economic Development and Strategy for the City of Boynton. On tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock, we have a vendor fair for the Sarah Sims Park. Uh, we will be um, inviting um, a lot of vendors out and, and sent that information out. We've got postcards out. Uh, we've had a flyer out. Um, we're asking all of the vendors in the city, especially if you're local vendors, small vendors, to please attend. Uh, there's a lot of work going on in Sarah Sims, and there will be a present, good presentation on the project, the schedule. Um, we will have a lease there from our procurement department. We will have Mike Simon there from the CRA, and we have Gary, our city engineer, there to talk about any project and answer any questions. So we're excited about this. This is part of our Building Wealth in the Community Initiative, where we're breaking projects down into smaller projects and, and certainly trying to push that out to the local uh, local community. So if there are any questions, thank you. Mayor. Yes. Th this is not a question, but I'd like to say to staff, I've seen you all the other day out there, you know, doing your 
tie-ins for Reclaim Water out at Sarah Sims Park. I just want to tell you all thank you. I didn't know what the H you all was doing until I went over there, but I got it straight. Thank you. Now we'll open up to public audience. Oh. And if, yep, Richard one more. Radcliffe, can we, can we, oh. we want to do the announcement for the home rule? Did you want to do that? I was going to put it oh, do it under public audience. Did yeah. You? Okay. Does, Sorry, uh, you said he didn't need more than three minutes. Gotcha. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So public audience, individual speakers will be limited to three-minute presentations. Please state your name and address for the record. Gary Taylor, 1086 Southwest 26th Avenue. I attended the culinary job fair this afternoon and in which they had a celebrity cook-off. And Mayor, you were one of the winners. So I just wanted to public make it known publicly that your new wife should know that she will not have to spend all the time in the kitchen. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Richard. Yes, good evening. I'm the executive director for the Palm Beach County League of Cities, 301 North Olive in the community, uh, the governmental center. And I'm here, I'd like to thank Boynton Beach for you have home rule on your agenda. You're passing a resolution that is in commemoration <coughs> of 50 years of home rule. Um, our president, uh, Mayor Ann Ger Gerwig wanted to be here, but she, like your mayor, had some city business tonight. She couldn't postpone. But I wanted to thank you for passing that and let your people know that home rule is what gives each city its character. And it's 50 years now that we are celebrating home rule in the state of Florida. When you drive up US 1, you know when you're in Lake Worth, you know when you're in Delray, and you know when you're in Boynton Beach. And the reason that exists is because the city of Boynton Beach gets to set their own standards. They can set their building height, their landscaping, put the trees where they want, put whatever they want in the rights of way. And slowly, the legislature has been trying to erode that ability of cities. So it's very, very important, and, and we thank you from the Palm Beach County League of Cities and the Florida League of Cities for putting out this resolution in support of home rule and the, the ability of each city to to have its individual character and each individual personality. So thank you very much for doing that. Richard, I, I just like to say that uh, <clears throat> when I get up to Tallahassee, this next session, that's gonna be one of my priorities to try to keep uh, what we have now as home rule in place. And keep remember, thank you very much, uh, Commissioner, and remember, if they offer you Kool-Aid, don't drink it. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. My name is Chris Tucker. I'm one of the parents of a um, summer program that you had down in uh, Hester Center. Said you guys are actually going to cut the summer program and after school program for next year. We were just aware of it three weeks ago that they told us they was cutting the program. Um, we talked to Mr. Wally. He told us three weeks prior to school starting that they're cutting the program. He said I was trying to work it out, but if he was trying to work it out, I don't understand why he didn't tell us before that school ended. It's ridiculous that we had to scramble to find our kids somewhere for our kids to go. It's ridiculous. We have some petitions here. They send the letters after we started complaining that the um, reason why they canceled it. They told us several things. First, they said that the buildings had to be fixed. Um, he told me that it was a problem with the transportation. But he said, economically, it's not a problem. Money is not the issue. If he said money was the issue, I was like, okay, I can understand that. He said funding is not the issue. So funding is not the issue. Why would you stop the program? He said, well, you can go to the one after your school. I said, okay, we can go to the one after school. But the problem is, economically, that's double the price we pay now. And if funding wasn't the issue, why do we have to pay additional fees? I thought this was our community. You know, and Mr. Wally lives in, I believe he lives in um, Delray. I live in Boynton. We're vested in this community. He's not invested in our community. I think it's ridiculous that he's making decisions three weeks prior to school starting. He doesn't care about us. It's not fair. If he's going to cut the program, he should have said that before school ended last year. Well, parents, this program won't be around next year. Three weeks before school starts, 
you cut the program and the funding is not the issue? That's not fair. I can't believe that. We said, did the mayor know? He said, no. The mayor didn't know. I said, the mayor doesn't know? Election time is coming up. So you only care about us when election comes. So when election time comes, then you come out, you shake our hands, you talk to us. But when something like this happens, you don't care about us. That's ridiculous. So we only care when election time. Then you can come out, you can shake my hand, you can say this, you can say that. But now when something like this happens to us as parents, I have petitions for the parents. Now you, no one cares. So it's a group of what, 70 parents? Those 70 parents don't, it's not an issue for us. 70 parents, oh, we don't care about you guys. You can go to your schools. Uh, my child's go to, um, my daughter, excuse me, I'm a little upset. Bent. My daughter's go to Citrus Cove. After school program is full already. So we have to wait for a waiting program. Me and my wife, we work. So it doesn't make a difference because we work. His job is fine. But our jobs are in jeopardy because why? Our kids don't have after school. That's not fair. And if money is not the issue, what's the issue? I have petitions from other parents. Hope you guys look into this. Yeah, Hope Ms. it doesn't just end right here. Mr. Tucker, thank you. Um, for you know, bringing this to our attention, I know that uh, city, our Parks and Recs Department is trying to find different functions for the facilities that your children were at. Yes, sir. Um, so that they do have after they have a, I forget, Colin, what did you say? The supervised recreational yes, program, sir. and I think we we still have the buses. So I guess Wally, is are you here? Um, I think we we not to, not to come up here, but we need to have something in works contacting these parents that who need to have after school care after school care that no longer have it um i don't necessarily know what we can do um but uh, you you are correct that 3 weeks before prior to school starting and i think so, that's ridiculous so the question is is that were you already going to sign up we've been asking we went to the school we went down to um what was that what's the center around here in the coastal, no one knew anything. No one knew, and we're asking. And you always have to sign up, because it's a great program. The kids love it, the parents love it. It's economically sound for the people that were challenged. So to cut it out, I tell, well, you have to go to your school. But what he said was, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry it's not gonna get me to work. Sorry it's not gonna get my kids picked up. For his job is signed, he doesn't have to worry about that. That sorry is ridiculous. I swear to you, excuse me, sir, ma'am, when election time comes, if you guys don't want to do anything, I promise you with all my heart, I'm one person, but I'll be on that corner every day saying these are the people that didn't care about us. These are the people that don't sir, care about sir, us. Sir, thank you. Sir, excuse me, before you go, turn your petitions in to the clerk, please. Yes, I'm missing. Yes, thank sir. you. No, no, no. Sir, it's okay. Thank, thank you. It's okay. Oh, and uh, Mr. Tucker, can you please state your address for the record? So, and uh, if... Um, uh, 500 Via Lagano Circle, Point Beach. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Blass, 113 Tara Lakes Drive, Point and Beach, Florida, 33436. I hope Mr. Tucker did not leave. No, because from the bottom of my heart, I support, there's Mr. no Blanche, way. You need to look at us when you I'm talk. Sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry to talk you. to you. From the bottom of my heart, I support your spirit and your determination to keep the programs going. And I can tell that the mayor does also and many commissioners. So I know action will be taken because the heart of Boynton is good. So don't give up, Mr. Tucker. I also would like to welcome, it's important for me, we have a new wonderful reporter from the Palm Beach Post from the University of uh, Georgia in Athens. He seems to be replacing Alexandra Zeltsa. Alexandra, I think, thought that we were a crime scene. She was a crime reporter. We need somebody who will really relate on the beauty and opportunity of Boynton, and I welcome him. He's there at the table. And uh, the home rule, sir, you spoke wonderfully. Yes, it is incredibly important that we have this identity of cities, of small communities, and it is part of the Constitution of Florida. And I have to, really have to, and I spoke to Justin Katz about it, there is something awful just happened in the legislature. I will speak actually slowly so you hear me. Uh, 
When you come to Florida, the entire coast of Florida up to high water mark is yours. The citizens of Florida are able to, to take a swim in front of Donald Trump's house. That's the Constitution of Florida. Can you imagine that some right-wing nut introduced a law that now the, the sheriff can chase you away from in front of rich people's houses? If you missed it, don't miss it. The governor may not be a left-wing liberal, but he said nobody will enforce that law. He hates it, Scott. So the law is on the books. That law should be repealed. Please remember that is protecting our constitution. That's why we're in Florida. Very quickly now, as you all know, I, I'm running for mayor. We have the best mayor in the world. Why would I be running? Well, the point is that he's going to be the uh, city manager and triple his salary. But um, what I really want to say, and congratulations on your merits, Maz Mazel Tov. And very quickly, this will sound incredible, but I am the incredible candidate. Using technology, private partner partnerships, the plan is that the minimum wage in Boynton will be over $50 an hour. Now, if you don't believe me, you'll get 20 Okay, so you believe me. Now, and also finally, if you want to get rid of me from all these elections, I am a right-in candidate for governor of Florida in November. Thank you for your vote. One more. Good afternoon. Um, just to support uh, Chris Tucker and some of the parents back there, uh, my name is Robert Simpson. I'm also um, part of the Boynton community. Um, I have kids that go to uh, Cross Point Elementary. Um, after uh, further research and looking into um, <clears throat> after school care programs, I do find that uh, this Boynton community has one of the greatest programs. Um, they've been going there for years versus uh, Cross Point or the local schools um, aftercare programs. We find that they're, they're exciting for the kids. The kids love it. Uh, we've met new friends, family through the community. Um, I'm disappointed in um, the email that I received. And I just want to let you know that I sent that email out to uh, the, the mayor, the vice mayor, um, pretty much everybody. Uh, the board. So if you check your emails, you should have that email. Um, you know, talking with the parents, you know, we find that, uh, you know, this great program that you have here, um, you know, is affordable for us um, versus the, uh, the school board or the Boys and Girls Club, which is double the cost. Now, if you think about that, you know, <clears throat> you know, it may not be concerning, but it is concerning, you know, for for the prices. So that was one big thing. Um, and then the email that was sent out three weeks prior doesn't give us enough time to make adjustments. Some parents haven't found um, aftercare programs. So you know, we we just hope that you guys read that email and uh, reconsider um, helping us out. And you know, we'll 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 definitely be grateful for for everything. So uh, that's all I have to say. Just you know, check your emails. Okay, thanks. Excuse me, you didn't give your address. Uh, 1425 Princeton Lane, Boynton Beach, Florida, zip code 33426. Thanks. Erica King, 2930 South Seacrest Boulevard in Boynton Beach. I would just like to say that I am a... I was born and raised in Boynton, and I've been dealing with parks and recreation for 10 years. I've had two kids go through there, and I was getting ready to do a third, but I possibly now have to put my five-year-old on a school bus, which is, I'm not happy about that. And the employees at the Hester Center didn't even know that this was happening, that they weren't going to do aftercare next year. I kind of knew something was up when y'all closed Art Center halfway through the school year last year, but... I'm still really looking for somewhere for my kids to go after school. I don't want to put my five-year-old on a bus. So it, it, wasn't, it wasn't right the way they did this. Three weeks is not enough time. And I, 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 asked, and I asked Todd in early July, when are they going to start registering for aftercare? Because I've been doing this for 10 years. And he said he didn't know. And I'm like, what do you mean you don't know? 
So it just, it was a breakdown in communication. And that's a problem when you're dealing with people's kids. And as for the price, I was at Point Siena, which by the way, no one else picks up at Point Siena. Like, you know, I couldn't find anybody else that picks up at Point Siena. I was at the school on Saturday, and they had their aftercare there. It was $141 for one child for two weeks. And I was going to have two kids. I can't, I can't afford that. That's crazy. So this, the breakdown in communication, the, the time frame that you guys gave us, it wasn't, it wasn't right. And I'm disappointed because I have been dealing with the city for so long, and I have lived here my whole life. And I'm just, I'm disappointed. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. One, I'm Laurel Francis. Oh, sorry. I'm Laurel Francis, and I'm also coming here to discuss about the aftercare and the summer programs. My daughters love it there. Like, they look forward to it. They were crying when I had to tell them that we're not going back. They were already devastated with the Art Center, and then now with the Hester Center, it was like a double blow for them. And I was one of those parents that was asking about it, because I know I was getting ready to go apply, because I know come August, you got to start going in there. And I wasn't getting any feedback or anything as well. And when I asked the employees, when I finally found out what happened, I was going to them to say, so what are you guys going to do? And they were looking at me like, I don't know what you're talking about. They were totally baffled and taken back, as many parents were when I told them about what was going on. They were like, I didn't know. They were looking forward to it. So that, again, we already discussed that with the breakdown. I just want to say that I'm still trying to get the Art Center back because my kids really love that. I just don't want you guys to forget in your planning about the aftercare. Like, it was really important, not even for the price, but just for the children's well-being and the parents' well-being. We trusted the individuals that worked there. Um, Mr. Deuce, I've known him for a couple years. My kids love him like they're his own dad. They treat him really bad, but he loves it anyway. <laughs> and the other people that work there, too, they were really nice that are still there. So I appreciate if you look into that and some of the employees that are there, too. That's all. Ms. Francis, we, got, we need your address. Oh, I'm 500 via Logano Circle. And I do see you all the time at the events, Mayor. That July 4th thing didn't turn out the way we planned, but it was okay. <laughs> That's it. Hi, my name is Tiffany Sanchez, 6372 Willoughby Circle, Lake Worth, 33463. Um, my child does not go to the aftercare, but he's there for the summer programs. He plays sports at the Hester, and I want to support the families who do depend on the aftercare because the facility is such a great facility. When you have children that look forward to going someplace, I think it's so important to try to keep it. I grew up in Boynton. So much has been taken away since I was a child that... You just kind of got to keep what you have. And just hearing that it's going to be taken for various reasons that have nothing to do with finances is just a little concerning. Just, you know, just try to keep something for the children. Thank you. My name is Rosemary Michelle. I'm at 2634 Quantum Lakes in Boynton. Um, I am one of the parents whose daughter has participated in the aftercare in Boynton for a few years now. And what I have found to be most concerning is the lack of responsiveness. I have been on some of the email threads. I have been with parents who have called me and said, you know, I'm a single mom and I don't have an extra $125 to put my child in 
another program at school or an, an alternative. And so what I'm going to do is take her to work with me or pick her up early. So these are the stories that I've been hearing. And it's very concerning because we recently found out and immediately we reached out to you, Mr. Grant, Mayor Grant, and I believe the other folks on the panel were also copied on the email. And Wally did respond. And the email, to summarize, was pretty much, sorry, we know we were not on top of things. We sent it out late. Here are some options, maybe. Good luck. And I don't think that's fair because, again, being on the ground and being someone like most of you who work corporate jobs, we know the importance of being on point, being on target. If we drop the ball, we can cost the companies millions and we can lose our jobs. And I think the same needs to be said in this situation. If you drop the ball, someone has to be accountable. It's not fair to the 70 names that we have. And that's with little effort, to be very honest, that we gathered those names. If we had more um, people on the ground and worked harder, that would have probably been hundreds. So someone has to be accountable. Someone has to be um, stand up and say, you know, not just I take the blame and, oh, I hope you guys figure things out, but really tr show a true care, a true compassion for people like myself who are taxpaying, who work hard, and who love Boynton Beach, and who invest in our community. It's not just about showing up at this town hall meeting, but it's about also going out in the community, volunteering, and giving back. And that's what me and a lot of the parents here do. So I really hope that you guys are listening to us and that you take this seriously, because our kids love that program. We love the program. And the staff love the program. So thank you. I guess, Lori, um, you're going to have a talk with our Parks and Recs director about what we're doing for the fall, because currently, do we not have a fun fair magazine for the fall? We do have, we do fun fair, yeah. We do we have a fun fair magazine? A Is there information about what's going on in all of our different departments there? Okay. Every program. So, oh. and we aren't, we aren't, haven't discussed canceling uh, our summer camps at all. At all. It's for just next the year. aftercare for this next year. Okay. All right. Moving on, if there's no more public audience, to administrative. Our first one is. Commissioner McRae, the Planning and Development Board alternate. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'm not going to appoint anyone tonight. I'm going to wait and see if anybody else shows up. This is an important board here in this city, and I would like to give other individuals who's qualified to place their names before I make a decision. I'll do it at the next meeting. Thank you. Commissioner Casello, you oh. have the Recreation and Parks Board. Yeah, we had three great uh, candidates. I read their resumes, all great, uh, but I came down my choice to be Kevin Lee. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor state so by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Commission discuss uh, the following. Uh, first is moving the September 4th, 2018 commission meeting to Thursday, September 6, 2018 in order to hold the first public hearing on the full year 1819 budget. Is everyone okay with that? Uh, I, I'm going to be okay with it, but I, I'm just saying this is something that we do every year. And I'm trying to figure out why, you know, there's a hustle, you know, at the end we have to start switching days. I know every time we do this, we have to switch. And it's something that we know is coming. And, and I'm trying to figure out why we have to do two Thursdays instead of just one Thursday. I'm just saying, you know, I do work on Thursdays. I'll be here, but I'm just saying, you know, uh, to the city manager and to the staff in the near future, you know, please kind of work with us and have a schedule too, okay? Thank you. Yes, sir. And if I may, just the um, we have to work around, which makes it difficult every year until the school board and Palm Beach County Commission establish their public hearing dates. We're, we're by law prohibited to conflict with their dates. So it changes every year for us. Um, and so that's one of the kind of the last kind of last minute. And the trim schedule also um, and with our fire assessment adoption, both of those schedules that are, are mandated through the Florida statutes. Don't allow us to, you know, we have to do it so many days after a certain date, so many days before, so we have to work within a very difficult schedule. So, unfortunately, it just makes it hard for us each year to, 
to be able to pick a date, Commissioner McCray? You know, it, we have to usually work into a date uh, based on these calendars. So um, we don't have much flexibility, unfortunately. And I apologize for that. Next is to schedule a special commission meeting on Tuesday, September 11, 2018 at 6 p.m. prior to the CRA meeting to consider a final fire assessment rate resolution. Everyone okay with that? Yes. Thank you. And the next, the last one is to schedule a special commission meeting on Thursday, September 20th, 2018 to hold the second and final public hearing on the full year, fiscal year, I'm sorry, 1819 budget. Um, Lori, how long do you expect the the meeting to last on September 20th? Fire, the September 20th is our second adoption hearing? Yeah. Well, that's, you know, we usually do a very brief presentation because we've worked through it. So it's up to the commission on how much discussion you want if you amend things. But if not, they move pretty quickly. So then I'll ask uh, the commission, do we want to have two meetings that week or do we want to try to move the two to the commission meeting on September 18th to Thursday, the September 20th to only have one meeting that week? I saw one. I know, Commissioner McCray, that you're you're working. It's it's difficult, um, and so you're against that. I saw uh, Vice Mayor nod her head. Um, Commissioner Katz and Commissioner Casello, do you mind having two meetings, or is you're trying to do for one? Whatever works for the majority of the board is uh, the commission is fine with me. Are you, you're saying your request is to move the meeting that's already been scheduled for Monday the 17th. I have it on my schedule as Monday the 17th instead oh, of right. Tuesday. Because of um, Jewish holidays. Yeah. So you want to move the Monday meeting to the Thursday? Correct. To, to coincide with the special? I don't, have, I don't have a problem with that Monday meeting. Um, are we not able to move that special meeting to the Monday? Does that not work? No. And no, you can't yeah, do it. Because it has to be a certain amount of time gotcha. from that Thursday. So. Um, yeah, I mean, if... You know, if it's agreeable to the commission, I don't have a problem putting them all on Thursday. All right. Um, yeah, I'm okay with having only one meeting that week. So we got a majority. Are we moving it? Yes. So we'll have okay. our second city commissioner's meeting on Thursday, September 20th. Yeah, this is the first year and I don't know how many years, Tim, that we usually we hit it lucky and we can hold our budget hearings on our regular commission meeting nights. This is the first year in a very long time that neither date worked for us and we had to do special meetings. It's not the norm. And I think, Commissioner McCray, that's why you're not used to, we don't normally have to do that. And in one month, you don't no see that, right? Moving on to consent agenda. Real quick, Mayor. Yep. Um, just while we're talking about dates, I just want to get confirmation that the November 6th commission meeting no. is, is moved to November 7th because of Election Day. Can I get? Um, I'm not going to be here on November 7th because I'm heading out to the National League of Cities Conference. Because um, okay. I have it on my calendar as the 7th, so I think it might have already been moved because it's, it's certainly not going to be on election night. On, I, I, you know. I don't know when it was put on there. Um, I won't be here, so either if we could have it on Monday or not have it, it that already, Tim? Monday they'd be campaigning. Yeah. 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 yeah, so we did move it to November 7 already. Yes. Right. Um, Tim Howard, when we were working on the calendar for this year, mm -hmm. yeah. we came back in October, I think, and we asked, and we moved it from Tuesday because of the election to Wednesday, the 7th. Okay. And so, Vice Mayor's going to have to run a meeting. Yep. <laughs> All I fight. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next. Is there any further administrative items? Seeing none, moving on to consent agenda. Um, Commissioner McCray, you, uh, is there any additional items to be pulled? No, just C. E, I, I, I got, you got it. Got for, okay. So, first item is item C. Commissioner right. McCray. Thank you. Uh, I need somebody to come down and explain this to me. I, I know what is going on is with the Palm Beach County School, you know, for the officers. My take is that we need to state for the audience, will the city be reimbursed for the money that we will be, that people will be? Yes, sir. The question about reimbursement? Right. Oh. 
Okay, we will be reimbursed by the money. Okay, the second question is, when they start filling these slots, will they do one school at a time or will they do one person for each school and kind of like rotate it so we don't look like we will get overlooked? Did they come up with a plan? For the re for refilling the positions? Refilling yes. the positions. We, we have a schedule at the police department to fill the, uh, to backfill those openings at the schools in Boynton Beach. And as we've addressed the uh, Palm Beach Schools Police uh, very clearly that we need to be at, have a priority in getting our officers back out of the schools for our own needs in the city. So they've agreed to try to prioritize us towards the top. When they hire new officers, they're going to be putting them into the priority schools, and we will be one of those priorities. Okay. Thank you. Absolutely. You, you answered my question. Motion to approve. Second. Any further discussion? <laughs> Seeing none, all those in favor state so by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Moving on to item E, proposed resolution number 18-102. Right, uh, Mayor, uh, I want this pulled because I do have discussion because we have $200,000 and this money has already been allocated and we're working on the budget and I'm just saying if we could find that $10,000 someplace else because uh, this money has already been promised to the different agencies here in Iowa uh, City, and I think it'd be a, a detriment to us to go in and say we got to take money from you to make something up when we already voted upon something and approved it. That's my comments. Yes, Ms. Sherrod. I need to understand this question. Octavia Sherrod, Community Improvement Manager. I need to get, get I, I did not, Mrs. Sherrod, I did not have a question. Okay. What my comment was that we need to let it stay the way we it is, be the way we have already voted. The money that has been allocated, let it remain with those individuals, and we look for money elsewhere when we do the budget. You can? I know we can. Yes. With that being stated, motion to approve. Second. Uh, cl clarification? Yes. If I understand the... Uh, the agenda item, we're simply saying that there were $200,000 from last year that were not expended, so we're moving it over to this year's budget, correct? Yes. Okay. Is anybody from that was going to receive that $200,000 not going to receive it? For the after, for which program? For the after school program? For children? Yeah. You need to precisely, that's a public service. And public, we are, we are um, bound statutorily that only 50% of each year's allocation can go for public services. And so what is our public service allocation going to this year? Uh, public service allocation uh, came to $81,659. In your backup material, um, I do have a PowerPoint that shows where the allocation went. Yep. Okay. So oh, can you see it? If you don't see it, it's in your back. It's also yeah. in your backup information. Of uh, that I was actually the informational from for the the audience that you skipped over for the first. Oh, two. you want me to go back? Yes, please. Okay. Okay, this is a description of our action plan. Our action plan is developed and submitted annually to meet HUD's statutory requirements for receiving the CDBG funding, and it provides a concise summary of the activities that the city intend to carry out with our annual uh, allocation. Same four agencies this year as we did last year, aren't they? The same, it? the same. Uh, yeah, people. the same four: Pathways to Prosperity, Community Caring Center, AVDA, and Legal Aid Society. Right. Um, we're the same. Actually, we're four agencies that applied last year and were awarded as well. And fifty. Uh, our allocation this year is five hundred and forty-four thousand three hundred and ninety-nine dollars. Fifteen percent of that. Is $81,659 for public services. That has been distributed with the Community Caring Center getting $45,000, AVDA 
aid to victims of domestic assault, abuse, $10,000. $5,000 is going to the Legal Aid Society of Palm Beach County. And pros uh, Pathway to Prosperity, $21,659. Thank you, Colin. But I t it didn't. Okay, tell Terry. Terry, move, can you move it forward for me? The next slide. Well, before oh, you yeah. go, Terry, what I did, this slide tells about our marketing, um, who we and how we market the programs, how we tell people about the CDBG program and our housing program as well. Uh, those are the, uh, the avenues you. that we use. Thank you. Okay. Next slide, Terry. Okay, I know that's hard to see, but um, I already told you what the distribution for the public services. If you have any other questions, uh, I can go into that with you. Um, $80,000 is going to the Boynton Beach Faith-Based CDC, um, who uh, is our agency that helps us with our affordable housing program. They help us screen our applicants. Uh, they do the first-time home buyer workshop program, and they work with the lenders as far as uh, mortgages are concerned. <laughs> Um, $173,861 is going uh, to our housing rehabilitation program where we do single family housing uh, rehabilitation where we address code related items. We also leverage those dollars with our ship dollars uh, with, which lately have been sporadic up and down. Some, um, we get money from the state um, as a result of the Sadowski Act. So we leverage those dollars for that. $100,000 is for the rehabilitation delivery, um, for the inspections and uh, everything related to the housing. 20% um, of our funds uh, go for the administration of the program, the place staff, for planning, advertisement, and uh, anything else uh, um, that we need uh, in relationship to the program. We had $200,000 that we rolled over that uh, we had from previous years, um, one for economic development. We keep kind of storing it in case something wonderful and awesome comes up that can create or uh, retain jobs for our community. And $100,000 is set aside for um, redevelopment in the heart of Boynton. Mr. Casella. Yep. Every year, this, the number changes for this, uh, for this grant. It's not always a consistent number, correct? The number is never okay. the same. So when we have X amount of dollars in here, why don't we disperse it totally? Why are we rolling 200000 from last year into this year for the sake of maybe waiting for something wonderful to come down the road? There's well, a lot of great agencies up there that on a lot of great programs that this money could have been dispersed in, and used for. But they can't use it. For public service, I understand that, but the two hundred thousand could have been used. Well, out. we could use it for housing rehabilitation because we are averaging fifty thousand dollars per. So unit. why don't we do? So my question is then why why are not why aren't we doing that? Why are we rolling over large sums every year? We can do that. We can disperse it. We can assign it to. Uh, but let's, I, I'd like to use it for the purposes intended and not, you know, okay. keep it like in a slush fund or rainy day fund, you know, wait till next year. We've got this money. It's a grant money. Let's disperse into it, you know, and use it to the best of our abilities. Okay. I concur. Commissioner McCray. Thank you. But, Mr. Rod, in regards to having to roll it over, at the present time, that was no need. Am I correct? That's why we have this $200,000. That was no need. There was no immediate need. Immediate need. Immediate okay, need. so that's why it's still two hundred thousand dollars. I'm just saying, you know, if a need comes, then we can move it. I'm just saying, like we do with the budget, we move money all the time. So, the, uh, do we ever run out of funding from last year regarding housing rehabilitation? No, we didn't run out of money. Okay. Um, we kind of um, make do, but I know we have a higher influx of applicants this past year, so. Uh, I'm anticipating that um, we will exhaust those funds. So if those funds get exhausted, then 
we can take from the economic development and uh, the heart of Boynton Beach? We, we can do a minor adjustment. Okay, so you'll let us know if we need to do that. Absolutely. Um, or is the rest of the commission okay with that? If, if there's a need for it this upcoming year to take the funds instead of uh, allocating them currently? I don't understand what you're asking. Just keep it as is. Yes. Yeah. Instead of this consent agenda item? Yeah. Yeah, as, as presented. presented. Okay. And if there's a need to change the money, then to change it later on. Right. Motion to approve. And it was second. 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 All right. And I still as want to say something. Yes. Okay. Um, I, I've, I've always commented on how I, I'm still somewhat disappointed in this program and how we have a lot of work that we need to get done. I am happy to hear what you said, that there's a, an influx of applicants coming in and that are uh, going to be applying for these monies and that possibly will exhaust our reserves for this. So I, I look forward to that. I think that's actually a good thing. And um, I've also spoken to our Mark Woods. I've uh, expressed this to um, several individuals within the West Wing that we need to do a better job of outreach to help make sure that individuals are aware of these programs to help rehabilitate their homes and rehabilitate uh, their surrounding areas to really help improve their neighborhoods, improve their areas. So I'm looking forward to those improvements and those outreach efforts, and I, I hope to hear some good outcomes from that in this next fiscal year. My final comment. Yes, please. Th thank you. Uh, my final comment is that there's a, a lot of individuals who go and apply for this money, but when we they start asking questions about income, et cetera, how many is in the household, they shut them down. And so a lot of them who apply, they don't go any further because they say you're getting too much into our business. I'm just saying. So if they want to release the information, then we can move forward. Am I correct? It is a very invasive process. Thank you. A lot of paperwork and a Lots lot of, of personal information or financials that people get uncomfortable with providing. And we have personnel to explain yeah. to individuals? We, yes, we do. Okay. But the, the paperwork does not become a public record, is that correct? No, it doesn't. Right. right. So that, I mean, I think those are some of the things and hurdles that need to be emphasized and continue to help overcome whatever fears these individuals may have because we don't want to uh, off-put them simply because they see a stack of papers in front of them. So. Um, that I, think, I believe that staff's job as well to continue to make sure that those those hurdles are over camp are overcome. We do have a staff member well on top of Octavia, but Lachey does. Uh, they work very individually and and kind of an ombudsman or a coach through the process for applicants because it's very onerous. So no one can really do it on their own. So we, we do that. Work and closely how, with each applicant. And how many of these staff members are bilingual in terms of being able to communicate with the commu community? Uh, there are no them? bilingual staff we, members we on our in. step, but we have always used uh, city employees. Yeah. Not only that, we have um, Spanish and Creole-speaking people who work for the Boynton Beach Faith-based CDC uh, that we refer them to. Um, we have been very... Uh, particular with how we handle our our potential applicants who speak other languages because we want to feel them to feel comfortable with working with us and we have over the years uh, done quite well with them not only have we assisted them with purchasing rehabbing but we have also done a, a great job with helping people avoid foreclosure as well because that has been a very um, um, a huge issue with people who are about to be foreclosed. So we do a lot of hand-holding. We always have. Thank you for clarifying, Mr. Rock. Mm -hmm. All right. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor state so by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Moving on to item G. Thank you. Uh, this is for the city manager. Lori, I see that it's not to exceed $75,000. What happens after $75,001? What do we do then? Uh, for a separate bid? Uh, Tim Howard, oh, Assistant Tim, City I'm Manager. Sorry. Well, we'll go ahead, um, sir. So on this one, what this is is a pre-qualification that we're asking you to approve the top four for minor construction projects like rehabbing a bathroom or things like that. We would send it out to the four, get a bid, give them a couple days turnaround or a three-day turnaround. $75,000 and under, we're asking that Lori be allowed to sign the PRO or the agreement, $75,000 and over, we'd bring it back to the commission for approval. But I need to hear motion to approve. Yes, what, Commissioner Casella. Uh, Tim, what's the current limit of the city manager's ability to sign off on uh, things? 
$25,000 for um, commodities and $75,000 for construction that's not repair and maintenance. So it's still going to be twenty-five seventy-five. Yeah, except for we're going to we're going to we're asking for her to have seventy-five thousand dollars on these minor repair projects. Because if not, what happens is we have to do a forty thousand dollar formal bid, advertise it thirty days, summarize it, and bring it back to you. And this way, we're we're able to shorten that turnaround time period to these select these qualified contractors to where we can get some of these projects out. The door and get them done. These would be for so the difference is they could be repair and maintenance projects right. that normally right now I don't have right. that authority. Up to seventy five. It's which is odd the way our I know it, the way our purchasing procedures are written that I can do seventy five for construction but not a typical repair and maintenance. Right. It kind of doesn't make sense. Right. So this is allowing for if we have a, a small rehab project that I can I have the authority on a repair and maintenance item as well. So that's the difference. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Or top ranked, um, how many of them are local? Uh, none of them are local. Within Palm Beach County? Um, they are in, within Palm Beach County. All um, four? They are. Boca, West Palm Beach, Lake Worth, and West Palm Beach. Yeah, all four. Thank you, Tim. Mm -hmm. um, Commissioner McCray, you had a question? Motion to approve. No. I'm just uh, scratching. My, my one other thing is that I know that, that we had four-year um, terms to um, renew this same contract. Um, I just, you know, want to know that before we do it for another four, you know, four years, that if a, a local vendor does have the opportunity to get into this cycle. So the way this is structured is that it's a one-year contract with these four, and then we have four one-year renewal periods for these four. Um, in order to insert another vendor, we would not do a renewal period and go back out on the street. So, you know, normally I, I know what happens in the sense is that we really, it gets renewed right. under the consent agenda. Um, can we make it for three, you know, three year, three year, three one year renewals? If you'd like this? to modify the renewal periods down from four to three, that's fine. Um, and I just need that direction. And so that's the reason why is that if there is someone local that they know that it's not five years, it's only four years. Is that okay with the Whatever commission? Whatever the pleasure is of the commission. So I, I would ask for amendment for that one item. What are the, the pros and cons from staff's perspective with regards to cutting it at three years? Um, the, there's not really, the, the only con part is that we're going to do another pre-qualification RFQ a year early. It's just a large it, volume it, of work. It's we not, had, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's not that's that. all. It's, it's some... Yeah. You know, we try to go three because to five years on contracts because preparing it right. and going out and evaluating is I mean, a tremendously onerous Because this process. doesn't include price. Yeah. Right. No. And so that's the reason why this is the pre-qualification. And so... Yeah. It won't impact staff that much. That's fine. Yeah. I mean, we do it a year We've got the documents set up. Yeah. This one was the difficult one because this is one of the first pre-qualifications that the city has done. We've only done a couple of them in the past. So this was where a lot of the work, um, legwork had to be done. So going uh, forward is fine. It shouldn't be that hard. Right. So if we All want right. to drop to three, just... Okay. Vice Mayor? Uh, to just piggyback on what the mayor kind of started going down uh, that route, the other three the other three companies that weren't ranked part of the top four, are any of them local businesses? There was one that was a local business <laughs> mm -hmm. and received the preference points. Mm -hmm. um, that vendor ranked number seven out of seven after the scoring by the review committee. But they did receive the points that were allowed. So, yeah. So, um, so I'd ask uh, Commissioner McRae if you would like to amend your motion. I'll, I will amend my motion to make it not four years, but three years. Do we have a second on the amended motion? Second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor state so by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Moving on to item H. Right. Thank you. 
I was hoping that this would have, would have passed the first time that this came before us, but it did not. But anyway, uh, since I serve as an alternate on this agency, uh, Mayor, you serve as, you know, the representative for this city. Uh, and the person that's here tonight, you know, who oversees this, you know, I, I'm going to offer a motion that we go ahead and approve this. A second. Is there any discussion from the board? Seeing none. All those in favor state so by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Was there any other items? We got uh, M. Item M. M. Yeah, you're talking about the salt? Yep, the, yeah, the sodium chloride. Okay, I'm going to ask this for staff, and my question is that, okay, about every year we have to go through this same thing about, you know, increase, we need more, we need more. When you all are doing your uh, preliminaries and saying what you need, are you all not looking at the whole year? Or I know that it's going to be increases, you know, I'm just saying, why do we have to keep doing this every year? You, you never came before us. Not the years I set up here and said that we need a decrease. It's always an increase, but it's still going up. So somebody explain to me, what are you all doing? Are you not looking long range? Or are you not looking at the full price? Or are you are scared to tell us what it's going to okay. cost? And then you come back and tell us. Who's ready? <laughs> yeah, Colin Groff, Assistant City Manager. Joe can answer that question, but I'm going to get the answer is, when I ask our staff to budget, we ask them to budget. Uh, we ask them to do the formulas, calculate exactly what they need, and don't put any extra in. And this particular one extra was needed because we changed the process mid-year. Um, so I do it because I don't like to see wasted money sitting in a budget that we fund and we don't need. So that's why we don't see de decreases. Um, but that's really the reason why is I direct staff to give us the exact amount that they've calculated with no extra in the budget. So there's no fluff in the budget. Whether that's good or bad, that's the way I direct staff to do it. So, Colin, excuse me, I'm going to stop you. I think that's bad. I'm, I'm just saying because, you know, we have to look for increases, and I'm just saying and whatever is left in the budget is rollover anyway. In utilities, it's a little bit different. It, in utilities, it's not rollover. But it stays in utilities. It stays in the reserve it, fund that you have to. That's what I'm saying. But it does affect the rates over well, time. It, okay, but I, I'm just saying, you know, so maybe you need to look at your formula. We, we can do and, that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. We're trying to get it dead on so we don't well, ever have to come back. You don't have it dead on yet, so look at it again. <laughs> We're getting it. Okay. We'll, we'll work right. on it. All right. We will get there. I'm, so, I'm okay. Okay. Thank my, you. my question is, what was the change in process? Uh, it's the, the new plant. Uh, the new plant that we had? Right. Yeah, the ion exchange. Yes. Okay. And we didn't, to be honest with you, that one was brand new, so we didn't anticipate as much salt as we actually used. And so are we uh, pumping out more potable water now? We are. And Absolutely. And so we have to do new yes. formulas for next year. Uh, yeah. This one was really, this particular one was, it's a new process, and we underestimated what the salt use was going to be based on the flows and the, and the organic matters in the water. All right. So, Thank but, you. But I directed them to keep the budget. <laughs> and the, that way we keep our utility rates low. Exactly. Thank you. All right. Motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Any further discussion from the board? Seeing none, all those in favor state so by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? I'd like, to like to approve the rest uh, on the consent agenda. So I heard a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor state so by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Consent agenda is approved. Moving on to bids and purchases over 100,000. Proposed resolution number. 18-109, approve the ranking as recommended by the Evaluation Committee and authorize the City Manager to sign an agreement with Beltman Group of Pompano for Municipal Complex Relocation Services. The estimated cost for this move is 200000 However, the final cost will not be known until the City determines exactly what will be moved and the vendor can calculate costs based upon the fixed uh, firm pricing obtained through this RFP. The scope of this RFP also provided that upon com completion of the Town Square project, the city would require moving services from temporary locations to the new buildings. I, I have a question for staff. Yes. I, I want to make sure, Tim, is $200,000 going to be enough? I'm just saying, or you, did, you, did you do your formula where it's more? Um, I picked this number. Come on. As an estimate, out of the air. Okay. Um, it, we, what we did was we asked for hourly pricing, truck pricing, driver pricing. 
the dilemma was we did a walk through for the proposed vendors, a mandatory site visit. We walked them through City Hall and we walked them through the police station. The problem is we don't know exactly what staff is taking because we're, we're still working on the temporary spots and we didn't know what furniture was going to be there and what was. So until we can actually tag what we're taking and people can get, get rid of and purge the documents or scan the documents they're not taking, they couldn't give me a volume price. They couldn't give me a, 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 a not to exceed amount. They could give me an hourly rate, a truck rate, a day rate. Um, so what will happen is we've got those those prices. Um, <coughs> Gail Moots will work with them, whoever is selected, if this vendor is selected, starting tomorrow. Um, they will then start to come through and uh, give us estimated pricing based on what our staff is tagging to take. Um, we're hoping, and I'm, and I'm, I ha I'm estimating two hundred thousand. Could I be off? Yes, I could be off. But hey, Colin, we over here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, and then Tim, this is also for the move back as well. That's what we would like yes. because we really don't want to. <laughs> and this way, we get the same rates in two years in the future. Right. The same hourly rates. Okay, um, I'm okay with that. And, and just, we look forward to seeing how good you are at estimating. And, so we, we and just, a, just so you know, we received three <laughs> quotes, uh, two from Pompano Beach, one from Fort Lauderdale. And Beltman has done city moves before, so they are familiar with city okay. types of moves. Thank you. Special. Uh, uh, do I have a motion? motion to approve? Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor state so by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion is approved unanimously. Approve an increase to Johnson Controls Fire Protection, formerly Simplex Grinnell, for contractual fire alarm sprinkler system services and repairs under the source well, formerly NJPA contract, from 24000 to 100000 I have questions I'd yes. like the staff question? to explain. Yes, sir. Oh, Why yes. did it go up so much? So, <laughs> so um, the answer to part of your question is that the, only, the reason that you only see increases is because you as a commission give us authority to spend up to an amount. So if we spend less than that, we don't have to, we don't need, there's no need to come back and tell you that we, we decreased it. So the only reason you're going to see us again is, is to increase it. That's part of, your, part of your question. The second part on this one was um, this company changed names during last year and they changed their whole accounting system. Um, so in our last fiscal year, they didn't bill us in a timely manner, and they're catching us up this year. Um, so what our original estimate was, it has, we've gone through that amount, and we have invoices that were catching us up from la their accounting system from last year. So Let, let me ask you a question. Since Sorry. they did not bill us in a timely manner, going through the budget, did we put this money in there? We have it in there. Okay. Okay. <coughs> Motion to approve. Do I have a second? Any further discussion from the board? Seeing none, all those in favor state so by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none, motion is approved unanimously. Award bid number 10-2512-18IT to the two lowest responsive, uh, responsive and responsible bidders, Atlantic Southern Paving and Seal Coating LLC of Sunrise, Florida, as primary vendor, and m, &M Asphalt Maintenance doing business as all County Paving on Delray Beach, Florida as second vendor for asphalt and sidewalk restoration in the estimated annual amount of $3 million. The initial contract period starts on the date of award and terminates one year from the date contingent upon receipt and approval of insurance and applicable payment and performance guideline guarantees. I, I have questions. Um, Commissioner McCray, then Commissioner Casello. Thank you. I, I know we probably didn't get one from uh, like in Boynton, but I need to know will we utilize uh, subcontractors with these contractors? I'm just saying, is this what they're going to be doing? I'm just saying, because we promised people that we was right. going, when there's sidewalks, we was going to try to use local. Right. So, um, two things. We, yes, we did receive a bid from a local vendor. That bid was deemed non-responsive. Um, that local vendor did not acknowledge a required addendum which included a new price sheet um, and it was 
it was stated on the addendum that submission of that and acknowledgement of that and the use of those new forms were a requirement in order to be considered um, responsive. There was another one that was deemed non-responsive because they didn't have the correct contractor's license that we required for paving. Um, and the $3 million is an up to an amount. Um, don't think that that's what's gonna be spent every year. It's just there so we have the authority so we don't have to come back to you um, to increase that authorization. And so we're awarding to a primary and a secondary. Um, so in the event that um, we have multiple projects going on that we need paving work done and the primary can't satisfy our time requirements, we have a secondary vendor to go to. Okay, let me say it again. Mm -hmm. Okay, since we're using these vendors, are they gonna be reaching out to people in the community who's able to do sidewalks? I'm just saying, you know, is, is that left up to them? I'm just that, saying, did y'all put anything in, their, a, in that utilize local? It's up to them to use subcontractors if they want to. We can um, recommend and suggest to them to use local. I, I would like for you all we to recommend will. and suggest them, yep. please. In addition. Yes, or Commissioner Casello is up next okay. if you have any comments. No questions. Tim, that vendor that was deemed not responsible, the, uh, that vendor has done a lot of work and has continues to do a lot of work, that local vendor right work, here in Boynton Beach. Correct. They've done work Just as one particular bid that right. they didn't get. Correct. Okay. They're doing workforce right also, now. Public work and also that $3 million that's coming from the penny sales tax that was passed. Correct. That's where the majority of the majority our of the funds will come from. And, and work, paving work is budgeted, yes. Okay, thank you. Vice Mayor. Um, I, I believe this may be more of a question for Colin, but are we doing a better job with ensuring that these vendors do a good job with communicating with the residents and the people who they'll be probably inconveniencing as they do construction? Colin Groff, Sin City Manager, thanks for that question. We're going to move the program that didn't work very well in your neighborhood, but it has worked in many neighborhoods very well to these projects also, where we go out with door hangers, letters, and we, we meet with the, with the people that were working in their neighborhood. Um, your particular, in that particular area, the contractor failed to uh, do what they were supposed to do, but we, we picked it back up and fixed it, I think. I believe we fixed the problem, but yes. So we're gonna use that customer outreach um, system that we've put in place over the last three years uh, to make sure people know what works going on in their neighborhood. Motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. What am I, the second guy tonight? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Enjoy it. All right. Any further discussion from the board? Seeing none, all those in favor, state so by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Approve the city of Boynton Beach utilizing the Palm Beach County bid for the purchase of sodium chloride solar salt quality with Morton Salt Inc. Palm Beach County complied with public bid requirements nice. equal to and are exceeding the city of Boynton Beach requirements. The anticipated expenditure for this purchase of sodium chloride for a one-year period is 160000 Tim, what was our um, request last year? Changed it to 165. Right. That was the previous one up under. Yeah, my hand was getting ready to right. go up. And, and 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 Colin, while my hand is up, we you you, you use the same formula. <laughs> yes, that's why it's up at 160 okay. instead okay. of the 120 okay. that we did last year. Okay. All right. Okay. So we should formula. be correct this year. Okay. 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 At 165. It was, was it 165 or 160 is, is what it says? It's, it's supposed 160 to. on both. Yeah. So it's supposed to be 165? It's supposed to be 165. You like we can so, no. So this year we're asking for 165 because we started up the process, used a little bit more. 160 is what we're going to spend next year. We're, we're 90. Okay. That's what I was talking to them about, making sure we were 100% sure that that's what we were going to spend so we don't have to come back. And we can roll over the salt, right? Yeah, we roll over salt. Yeah, we use a lot of salt. Okay. And we're right next to the ocean. Don't ask me why. Yeah, it's I know. <laughs> Vice Mayor? I'm, I'm just curious. Morton Salt, is that the same salt you get? Is that yep. the same company? Yes, it's the same yeah. company. That's cool. Okay. Yeah. Motion to approve. I'll Big second this time. Right, thank you. <laughs> I'll second for your commission. <laughs> Any further discussion from the board? Seeing none, all those in favor state so by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes unanimously. 
Proposed resolution number R18-110. Approved utilizing the City of Cape Coral, Florida contract with Shreve Chemical Com Company based on their bid for sulfuric acid with the same terms, conditions, spe specifications, and pricing and authorize the city manager to sign a contract with Shreve Chemical Company, the anticipated annual expenditure for the purchase of sulfuric acid, $100,000. Question again, Colin, same formula? Yes, okay. but, it, but it's correct. Okay. I'm going to see it increase. I'm good. I have a motion to approve. So move. Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion from the board? Seeing none, all those in favor state so by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Next, moving on to new business. Approve the use of $200 of Vice Mayor Romulus Community Support Funds to assist Digital Vibes, Inc. So moved. Back and fired for discussion. Yes. What is that? Oh, well, I'm glad you asked. Your, they didn't Mayor, put yours under there. Mayor, I'm, I'm glad commissioner. you asked, Commissioner. Yeah. Uh, well, Digital Vibes is an organization uh, that works, uh, I believe we can even have Wally or some individuals from our public, our um, Parks and Recs Department. They work with some of our local schools and also some of our aftercare programs. We actually had um, an event where, that they hosted at the South Florida Fairgrounds where over 4,000 kids that are participating in the different summer camp programs here in Palm Beach County came out and uh, they had like a dance competition and, and and just all these cool things, but the fact that they work with so many of our local um, organizations here, I, I just thought that we should, um, I should support their work and commend their efforts to keep our kids healthy, keep them safe, keep them off the streets, and actually help them do exercise, do things that physically get them moving, and uh, instead of sta sitting and staring at a TV screen or their phones or something lame. So, uh, so this is why I'm asking for this. Um, I would have given them way more, but I was. This is the last of my support funds, so I'm hoping I can uh, support them some more in our next fiscal year. Any yes. further discussion from the board? Seeing none, all those in favor state so by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Next is approve the use of $200 of the Mayor Grant's community support funds to assist New Era Prep Inc. with a student athlete event. New Era Prep is committed to investing in student athletes through leadership projects and community services. Motion to approve. Do I have a second? I get with discussion? Yes. Mind sharing? Huh? You mind sharing? Um, so New Era Prep, uh, I had a meeting with um, uh, Zavon Christopher and his partner Ken Stevens and they work with the local athletes here to make sure that they are not just planning on being football players or basketball players but helping with their scholastics so that if they get a scholarship to college that they're making the most of it. All right, any discussion, further discussion from the board? Mayor Grant, yeah. I just want to remind you that you would raise that to four hundred dollars oh well um we have a motion to approve for four hundred dollars wait a minute wait do he have four hundred dollars in his account yes he does okay good okay <laughs> oh Go he ahead. was gonna borrow some from yours <laughs> i'm <laughs> empty i'm zero I'm all right thank you do we have a second second all right all those in favor state so by saying aye aye, aye. all those opposed motion passes unanimously let me ask the question while we own that. The mayor gets more money for that instead of all. We all get the same amount? Yes, sir. $2,000. Well, I, I, I spend so much. Okay, I'm, okay, I'm good. Right. <laughs> I must be using question. your formula. <laughs> <laughs> Next is a proposed resolution number R18-11. Authorize the city manager to designate or designate to sign any documents relating to securing a loan from Doherty funding LLC to provide funds to finish the renovation of the high school for an estimated loan amount of $6.85 million. Second for discussion from staff. Yes. I hate to keep beating these things up, but uh, 6.85, that's going to be enough. Please don't come back and ask for any more money. Yes, that's going to be enough. Okay. I'm good then. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just for the clarification okay. of the staff. I mean, um, members of the public, please explain what this is. Certainly. Um, as you're aware, we're under the, um, we've already started uh, work on the high school. We've issued a PO um, of $3 million that we've paid towards it. Um, also, if you remember, in your CIP program and your surtax, we had programmed, uh, I believe, four to $4.5 million in next year's budget towards the high school. 
um, the, which is in place, in essence, of projects that would have been happening in these buildings. What that did was that would utilize the majority of your surtax for next year. So Doherty funding um, has been a partner through the town square process and the bonding process that we've been working on. Um, and we I've discussed with them about the possibility of securing a loan over, for a three year time period in order to spread out the repayment of that four and a half million over a couple fiscal years, which would free up some money that you could program for um, capital projects during that time period. Uh, also, there's some funding now that we have the bond set in place and what is required as far as a payment from the city and the CRA. Um, there is some funding remaining in 18, 19 from the funding that's already been approved from the CRA that can be used to pay it. Um, but I think this is the, the best way for you to be able to do some projects next year um, and split that four and a half million over a couple fiscal years. And they've agreed to do it with 4.85% interest, no collateral. Um, if we prepay within the first 12 months, there's a prepayment penalty. If we prepay after the 12 months, there's no prepayment penalty. So as we have funds available, we can prepay it and pay it off. My plan is to pay it off in 24 months versus 36. So I just need to cross those fiscal years to get cash flow issues. Do we have a first and second? All right. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All, the, all those opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Um, moving on to item D, which was our 12B. Uh, Joe, would you like to discuss? Yeah, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> I'd like to start the discussion off by uh, saying uh, I'd like to ask the members of this commission uh, to divulge any conversation or contact by any advisory board member for or against this ordinance. Does anybody have any contact with or? I mean, I said hello to Anthony Barber and David Katz since coming back. Okay. Okay, so there's I, no... I, I said hello to Mr. Katz. That was it. No okay, conversation. So, okay, no conversation about the... Okay, I just wanted to get that out there. Okay, uh, <clears throat> the purpose of this ordinance is the, the show of uh, transparency, in my opinion. You know, we as a commission uh, appoint all members to our uh, city's advisory boards. And some of them uh, we know personally. We form some friendships. You know, or work in relationship. Which leads me to ask for this ordinance. You know, when an advisory board member becomes a uh, paid lobbyist for a client with business before the commission or a CRA board in which he or she benefits monetarily, it could potentially put the elected body in an awkward or compromising position due to those relationships. We have had such incidents in the past where votes taken and later reversed due to advisory board lobbyists. Most recently, the CRA board was approached by such a lobbyist, which was unsuccessful, thank God, that potentially would have cost taxpayers of Boynton Beach thousands of dollars. You know, I'm not against lobbyists. God knows the road to Tallahassee is paved with them. Uh, and we've all dealt with lobbyists running for elected office. I have no problem with lobbyists. My concern is the, po the political optics of this city should be in a light of transparency. And having an appointed advisory board member as a paid lobbyist only clouds that light. So I'm asking this commission to consider to not have uh, advisory board members become paid lobbyists for them for their own personal monetary uh, gain. So that's that's the ordinance that's before you. It's, it's pretty simple. Uh, there's nothing uh, complicated about that. I, I, I would yeah. like to ask questions to council, and that is, uh, is this something that happens in any other city besides this city? That you know you that people serving on boards can be a lobbyist? I can't name a specific city. I do know that other uh, municipalities have uh, restrictions on board members' roles in advocating for or against the matters that have appeared before those boards on which they sit. 
and the ordinance is drafted speaks to that as well uh, because ask, it speaks to both lobbying or otherwise advocating thank you let me ask another question in regards to palm beach county uh we have a lobby uh they have a lobby record up there i'm just saying well what happens to that i'm just saying do they have the same criteria saying you know people serve on county boards do they do the same thing can they not do the same thing um, I did not research uh, the extent to which the county uh, regulates its board members. Um, my, my take is that I, I feel like, you know, before we start jumping through hoops, this is, I'm just one person, is that I like to know what other people are doing in regards to something like this. I like to know what the county is doing, any other cities, and, you know, before I make a vote on this one. All right. And, um, you know, one of the things that I was looking up, uh, the past meeting and on Tuesday, August 15, 2017, we had this item on the future agenda that you asked to be removed, if I'm not mistaken. And, you know, the discussion from last meeting was more or less discussing our entire um, lobbyist. And so I'd like, I guess, the legal department to understand what exactly the county does before we make any decisions. Um, and also, if you could do research for the other cities so that we don't have to come back here and change the lobbyist um, form in the future. Um, also, does it prevent, you know, uh, what is it, future um, past um, commissioners and mayors from lobbying the board? Um, because I know that is something that the state legislature uh, prohibited. So I just want to make sure that we're within the current statutes for what the new legislation is and what our options are for lobbyists before we create an ordinance. It is the commission in agreement. Uh, I'd like to offer a motion to table this until we get clearance from council. I would ask. Yes. I would ask that there, there's a difference between a, uh, a local ordinance and a, what the county. I, I don't think that, I think we're mixing apples and oranges here, maybe. Commissioner Katz. Yeah, I, with respect to the concern for the county's position, I, I personally don't think that just like any other ordinance we pass it, you know, we might want to look at what they do, but I don't think we need to be subservient to any other municipality or any other uh, county government with regards to what we decide to do. I think that when this was brought up a year ago, it was in reference to uh, an issue wholly unrelated to um, any lobbyists on our advisory boards, whereas in recent months, the issues that have been lobbied are, are directly related, in fact, voted on by the exact um, advisory board. So I, I have no problem, you know, being, uh, you know, being careful as far as how we proceed. But um, if, whether we look into what the county does or not, to me is irrelevant. I think that if the issue is that votes being taken or recommendations, you know, especially with financial implications, um, such as, you know, uh, planning and development, where that's where this sort of example exists. You know, I think that the key term there was the optics. If, if something is voted on on an advisory board and recommendations are made to this commission and then members of advisory boards then get paid to lobby this commission, um, it, it just, it looks terrible. Um, the, the example I could think of, and I'll use resident Susan Neuer as an example, she is very invested in, in the public arts and she had served on the arts commission at one point, um, you know, it would be akin to her being on the arts commission, making a recommendation and getting us to be in a position to vote for a certain type of public art from an artist and then being paid by that artist to lobby us to support that decision um i just you know i think that it's it's better safe than sorry and when when there's financial implications to advisory board votes that come before us and then advisory board members are paid and make financial gain personally um to lobby us to then follow their decisions it's just better safe than sorry again with regards to whether the county does or doesn't do this you know i don't, I don't know and it's to me at least it's not relevant because I'm concerned with the business of the Boynton Beach City Commission and our advisory boards and the perception of, of the integrity of our votes so that the county's position, whether it, it is or is not similar to what we're discussing here, um, to me at least, is, is irrespective. 
Okay, and I, void or mayor? Um, I understand I'm going to give Point it to you before I have a comment. Um, you know, the, the question that I have is, is that this is, you know, a lobbyist ordinance, and so we have not had one in the city. We've just been subservient to the county for the past 10 years or so since the county implemented theirs. Um, just to pick out this one item, I think, is uh, moving ahead a little bit too fast because we could have talked about this last year, and I was the only one saying, let's talk about it, and now... We don't want to talk about it. This is not giving us enough time, I think, to even uh, look at what the county does because it's not even in the backup. You know, it's not even, we haven't looked at it around. It's, I remember when we were trying to get um, the bike sharing program, you know, it had multiple meetings where we had the discussion about it before it came to first reading. Um, and so that, that's my thinking is, is that I remember the, the conversation last week I read in the minutes that it was or you know, looking at the Palm Beach County before making any decisions regarding a specific instance for lobbying. Because I, I, I'd rather just do this once and get all the information before we um, make a decision on this one specific item. But I'm going to open it up to public audience and then get back to you, Commissioner Katz, okay? Just yes. a point of order, Mayor. A motion was put on the floor to table this discussion. According to Robert's rules, when the when a motion is made to table, all discussion must cease until the vote is called on the motion to table. Thank you. I, I read it as if there has been a second. That ends the discussion. There has not been a second. Yes. Dr. Stephanie Hayden Adiemo, 2181 uh, Southwest 15th Avenue, Condo N102, Boynton Beach, Florida, 33426. Um, I, I, I really feel that I'm going to um, echo the sentiments of uh, Mr. Casello and Mr. Katz in saying that I think that um, this is an important uh, issue to bring in light because if it says, reading here, it says uh, uh, creating a new subsection to prohibit board member lobbying, okay? So it, 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 irrespective of what the county does, we're concerned about the city of Boynton Beach. And this is something that I think is very important because we can have um, individuals that sit on boards that do, whether it is financial, it could be in the favor of favors. So I think this is something that is very important. And as Mr. Katz, the mayor has, uh, excuse me, Mayor Grant has suggested, he would like to have more conversation. And I think for our community, um, if we're touting the word transparency, we need to be thorough in creating something. And if it's going to go on the books, maybe uh, as council, you know, to go and research this. But I think this is very important. This is not something to just brush aside. And then if something doesn't get passed, and you bring it back up and say, hey, how come when I brought this up, um, no one thought about this, uh, no one questioned or needed clarification? This is something I think is very important. Um, the former mayor just brought it up about you know, Robert's rules. If we're going to do everything in order and decency, we need to have thoroughness before we make something an exact ordinance. But we should not, we, we can look at precedents from the county, but we're dealing with this city. David Katz, 67 Midwood Lane, our fair city. I agree with Mayor Taylor, but since you're letting other people speak, I'll, I'll come up. To me, this is deja vu all over again. And with all due respect to Mr. Casello, and we all knew it, know what all due respect means in these matters, there's only one person in this city, and we've been over this before, who serves on a city board and is ever registered to be a lobbyist, and that's me. Of all the other board members in the city, there's nobody else. I find it interesting that Mr. Casella wanted to know if anybody was spoken to about this because he probably expected me to speak to members of the commission about this. And that wouldn't have been unreasonable by any stretch of the imagination because I know that he's directing this at me. He threw a bit of a public hissy fit over the red light cameras. It was rude to me, rude to the vendor at the time, rude to the vendor's attorney. And then when he was very involved and wanting to have the police station moved to closer to downtown. And I spoke to him about it, and he was my best friend because I was trying to get members of the commission to do the same. He had no problem with me talking about it then. And then recently he was upset because of the shovel-ready thing. And in fact, 
the, um, to register a lobby for a CRA involvement project is not necessary. But I did it to be with an abundance of caution and to be above board. And that's what I do. Of the three most recent things that I've been uh, hired to lobby for, we'll use the L word, the red light cameras would not come before the P&D board, which is the board I serve on. The police station eventually did, and I voted for the, the site plan. I had no ill feelings about it. And shovel ready, I don't know if it would have come before the P&D board. And the Palm Beach County Commission on Ethics and the ordinance that, that covers the county has a great stop gaps, stop gaps just, just like you would have to recuse yourselves, so would anybody on the P&D board. And I've never had to recuse myself from a vote on the P&D board because of anything that I lobbied for. Never. There have been other members on that board that have recused themselves. Susan Oria has, uh, Ryan Wheeler did, Kevin Fisher has, but I never had to. So this is an obvious personal thing. I don't know why Mr. Casello feels this way. It's funny that somebody from his the state house campaign reached out to me. You know, could I raise some money for Mr. Casello? And I brought him two checks at his kickoff party, and I've got a text telling me how, how he thanked me for it. So he likes, you know, if I know people, maybe to get money, and he got a lot of money. Mine was small compared to that. But I find it interesting of his hypocrisy about this whole thing. He knows it's about me. And he's going to be out of this city in 90 days. He's going to be gone. And he's saddling you with this, with this, what I consider a waste of time. Because it's all about me. It's not about whether you're a doctor and you might lobby on something. It's all about David Katz being on the P&D board and lobbying against something that he didn't like. He wasn't for. That's what it's about. And if, you know, the majority of this commission decides to vote for this. You know, either I guess I can choose to be on the P&D board or choose to lobby. Now, the P&D board is a volunteer position. We don't get paid anything. I enjoy it. I run a good meeting. The developers and their representatives will tell you that. Some of you have been there. But I'm not going to lose any sleep about not being on the P&D board, I'll tell you that. So you guys decide what you want to do, but this is an obvious personal thing against him, by him against me. It's so blatant. I'm trying to figure out how he feels about the wind caressing both sides of his face. Thank you. Uh, excuse me. Uh, David Merker, 8 South Port Lane, Boynton Beach. Um, Representative Casello, Commissioner Casello, I thank you. I thank you. Because this is so blatant, I never saw such insecurity that was like a run-on sentence saying the same thing over and over again. It's easy to talk, but when you're in a position that you're a chairman and you're a lobbyist and you're running people's campaigns, I think it's common sense. There's a question. So if you take it so personally, maybe it is personal and maybe it's factual. So I thank you. Representative Casello, I thank you, Commissioner Casello. Let's carry this through. Commissioner Cuts, you're up next. Yeah, I, again, I can't speak for anyone else, but I will say that, you know, to me, this is a, is a common sense issue. I don't believe this is targeting any particular individual. I believe it's targeting a particular activity, which may be exhibited currently by one individual. But this activity, I believe, needs to be prohibited for all individuals, which is what an ordinance would do. I have no problem waiting um, to give, you know, just time to, to research if people want to look at the county ordinance, even though I, I personally don't feel it's relevant. So, you know, I'm not necessarily saying we need to vote on this immediately today, but I am declaring that I want to pursue this um, because, again, the optics of anyone on an advisory board making recommendations and then subsequently being paid and making personal financial gain and then lobbying this commission uh, is it just whether it actually is or isn't unethical the perception is undeniable that it looks unethical and that risk is something that i don't think the image of the city should bear uh, especially given some of the sordid history of elected <coughs> officials in the city with regards to inappropriate conduct um so again you know this this issue at least for me has only become relevant now that it's come up versus last time when it came up because the the issues being lobbying lobbied for are directly related to 
uh, the advisory board in question where votes were taken to make recommendations. Um, I just, you know, I don't think it's it's out of line to look into saying that, that people on advisory boards for a city cannot make personal financial gain from their votes or from lobbying a commission to to sign off on their votes. So I don't I don't think, at least for me, it's it's not personal. I think it's it's an issue based question and, and I don't want anyone to come in here ever if there's a number of bids on a property or a piece of development and a recommendation from an advisory board is put before us and subsequently then lobbied for by someone on that same advisory board who is who's a, a registered lobbyist it just it uh it to me presents a, an unseemly site and potentially an unethical conflict of interest again if it needs to be delayed for people to get more acclimated with other examples out there but i i fully support pursuing this um just so that nobody can come in here and say uh, you know, you have these advisory board members who are then paid by the very people they're advising you to vote for something on. It, it just, you know, it, it makes sense to me. And I, I think that, you know, the question was presented to legal. And, and while the county ordinance itself was not necessarily provided, I think that it's, it's, it could be answered in the affirmative that there are, certainly are cities that have provisions similar to that being put before us. So it's, it's not something out of the ordinary. It's not something tailor-made or custom-made for any one individual. It's, it's a common thing that exists in municipalities and, and governments throughout the country to ensure transparency and try to wipe clean any, any risk of negative perception about votes taken up here. I think if, if, you know, if I up here cannot lobby, be a registered lobbyist, um, you know, to try to get I can't get paid to sit up here and then try to convince you all to do something. Why would someone on an advisory board get paid to come up here and lobby us? I think it's very similar. So it, it's a concern that needs to be looked into. Mr. Casella. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. I, I just want to preference what I, I said earlier. You, you know, uh, I'm a little not hurt. Mr. Katz, you've been in my home, you've sat in my living room, you've watched the results from election, past elections with me. You've brought, I've spent time on a golf course with you and a former mayor, played together. This is nothing personal. You've been very kind to me in the fact that you've brought investors into my campaign. You've brought people who've made campaign donations to me. That I'm very grateful for. This is not a personal thing. This is all about what is perceived of political Malfeasance. It's not right. It's what I'm trying to do is you. I've been to many of your PD boards. You're an excellent chairman of that board. You do a great job. I, I wouldn't really have to have anyone else up there the way you were in that meeting. So this is not personal, David. This is just the optics that it presents when you come up and you're getting a monetary value for your work and you come up and you only lobby three out of the five that you know that you can sway their votes. It's not like you do all five of us at the same time. That's a little troubling in itself. But I guess that's what lobbyists do. And, and I'm learning more and more about lobbyists as I go further up the ladder here. But to say that uh, you know the wind blows on both sides, it doesn't. I've been very open about this. This, this is not a personal attack on you. You're the only registered lobbyist that's come before this commission and CRA board that I know of. If there were others, they would be in this discussion also. So please don't take it personal. All right. Commissioner McCray. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, each one of us that sit up here, we have to go and take a training each year, and that's uh, on ethics. And I, I'm just saying, you know, that's why I want this table, you know, and, and then he can all, and the and council can also get a ruling from the ethics committee in regards to what we're trying to discuss. And then I feel better about voting for this. That's why I'm saying, you know, let's get some more clarification from legal before we move forward. If the ethics come back and say, you know, there is a perceived problem, then, you know, I will vote that there's a perceived problem. But I think that we need a little bit more study than just jumping out here just because <laughs> a couple of people feel like something's going on wrong. I'm not with that. Mr. McCray, are you changing your motion to table to ask the city council request an opinion letter from the commission on ethics? No, I'm not doing that. I, my t motion to table is for council to uh, question the ethics thing, you know, to bring back a statement. Not, mm. not. To do, would you like it, the, them to do both? They do both, right. Okay, thank you. 
Do we, do we have a second? I'll second that. All right. Any further discussion from the board? I would like to ask legal. Um, have there been any, in, in, in your opinion or in your uh, sight of what's the situation or the concerns that have brought up the situation, have there been any ramifications perhaps of unethical behavior that may have happened and, uh, because of it? That, um, so, she can't ask any more questions. Uh, excuse me, Commissioner Casello. You know, um, Commissioner Casello did a point of order that there has been the second for the the table, um, even though you're second, so you could remove it to ask the question. Um, but, no, no, because it's not for a motion table. Okay. So, if you don't mind asking counsel after a meeting or in the meantime, yeah, I'll, I'll call for. Right. A roll, um, not a roll call. Um, so, all those in favor, state so by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Nay. Uh, Commissioner Katz, I didn't hear your vote. Just the motion was amended to include tabling so that the city attorney could investigate the commission on ethics opinion. Yes. And look at the county ordinance. And yes. Other just cities. General investigation of other cities or governments and how this particular provision is handled. Correct. Okay. Yes. So the, the vote is four to one to table. All right. Moving on to legal A. We have uh, two resolutions. The first resolution, 18-112, authorize the city manager to enter into a purchase and development agreement between the city of Boynton Beach and Habitat for Humanity of South Palm Beach County for acquisition of vacant lots during, along Northwest 11th Avenue, subject to final approval by city attorney. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion from the board? Seeing none, any discussion from the audience? Seeing none. All those in favor state so by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Proposed resolution number 18-113. Authorize the city manager to enter into a purchase and development agreement between the city of Boynton Beach and Boynton Beach Faith-Based Community Development Corporation for acquisition of vacant locks along Northwest 11th Avenue subject to final approval by city attorney. Any discussion from the board? <coughs> Seeing none, we have a motion to approve. I'll move. Second. Second. Um, any, all those in favor state so by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Mayor, yes. since this has all been taken care of, I have a question for staff, and that is that the school is getting ready to start, and I know that we are going to be tearing up North East 11. I'm just saying, have you all mapped out a plan or something for buses and, for, and cars to go in and out? So, th yes, the work on 11th is where the drop-off lane is for the uh, parents. Right now, today, today, they started this week putting in the utility lines. Their, their job is to get that finished before school starts. If they do not, they still have to open the lane. So the drop-off lane has to be opened before school starts. That's, that's required. We'll open it. Um, the contractor may have to work. Or, they were supposed to start four weeks ago. They delayed it. So now they may have extra cost to work around the school because they're required to work around the school to keep the school drop-off open during school. So it will be open. Uh, we'll keep coordinating with the school it, as much as we need to. We, we, talked, we <coughs> sent an email today to them saying it'll be open. So we will do whatever it takes to keep it open. The contractor should have had all the underground in. They're still telling us it'll be in before school starts. All right, co coordinate with the school and coordinate right. with the elected officials, especially Absolutely. myself, because I'm, I represent that district and I want to know what is going on when I start seeing backups and stuff like that. We're, I'm just saying. We'll, get, we'll, get, we'll keep the weekly updates coming out and they'll be getting to you and it'll keep you track right on where we are on that project. Okay, thank you. All right, thank, thanks, Mayor. You're welcome. Moving on to ordinance number 18 020. Jim? An ordinance of the City of Boynton Beach, Florida, amending City of Boynton Beach Code of Ordinances, Chapter 26, Water, Sewer, and City Utility, by amending the regulations governing the methodology used for approving the utility rates governed, governing Chapter 26-9, Water, Wastewater, Chapter 26508, Reuse Water, and Chapter 26403, the Stormwater Assessment Fee, allowing rates to be set annually by resolution of the Commission, providing for city commission authority, codification, severability, codification, and an effective date. All right. May I have a motion to approve? So moved. I guess. Second. Thank you. Uh, discussion from the board. What are the rates? 
This isn't an ordinance to set the rates. This is an ordinance to remove the rates table from ordinance format, and then we will bring back the rates to you at the second reading in a resolution format, which will be the rates. So this is the, this is the issue we talked about in the budget, the rate in, uh, adjustments that we're looking at. Uh, we have to give 30-day notice, so they'll be coming back during the budget session um, after we give 30-day notice to the customers of the rate increases that you all had consensus on moving toward. So they're not in this ordinance. This is, that is, take, yeah. is that before the resolution or after the So what we'll do is we'll, this is the first reading first. of the ordinance to remove the rate table. Yes. At the second reading of the ordinance, we'll also have a resolution that, that puts the rates into a resolution format. So that's all this is, is changing it from ordinance format to resolution format. And then there's 30 days notice. No, the 30 days notice has to be before we bring back the resolution. So we're giving 30 days notice now. But we already gave the notice. We're, we're get, it's, it's in the, you have to do it in the utility building, and it takes a month for us to notify every utility customer through the billing cycle. So that's required by law. When will the new rate start, is my guess. Better. October 1st. Thank you. All right. And, 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 and this is nothing new. This is not new. No. No. no okay. No. Just telling you. Any Cleaning further, up the ordinance. Any further discussion from the board? Seeing none. Any discussion from the audience? Seeing none. May I have a roll call, please? Mr. Grant. Yes. Commissioner Katz. Commissioner McCray. Aye. Vice Mayor Romulus. Aye. And Commissioner Casello. Wait a minute, let me say yep. <laughs> <laughs> the vote is five to zero. All right. Staff uh, recommends to keep items D, E, and F uh, table. Not F. not F, just D, E. D, E, so we're going on item F now? Yep, we got F. Yep. Okay. Uh, pose, uh, Jim? Ordinance 18 0 one eight, an ordinance of the city of Boynton Beach, Florida, approving an amendment to part three land development regulations, chapter three, article four, section three D, zoning matrix and notes number one oh three, striking pilot program from the language providing for conflict, severability, inclusion, and an effective date. All right, may I have a motion to approve? No move. Any further discussion from the board? Seeing none. Any discussion from public audience? Seeing none, may I have a roll call, please. Uh, Commissioner Katz? Yep. Commissioner McRae? Yep. <laughs> Vice Mayor Romulus? <laughs> Commissioner Casello? Yep. And Mayor Grant? Yes. Vote okay. is 5 to 0. Next, we have a request for a closed door session. <coughs> yes, Mayor. Um, hopefully, in conjunction with your next city commission meeting before, during, or after, it's in the case uh, Quantum Park Overlay Dependent District. Um, that involves that, that matter. Secure Holdings, Inc. is the plaintiff. It's uh, case number 50-2016-CA-005668. This, in conjunction with some other litigation, um, has been plaguing the city for a number of years. There may be an opportunity to formulate some type of structured settlement to resolve this and other cases, and I'd like to talk to you about that in a closed-door session. Probably need 45 minutes to an hour. So we're getting lunch or dinner? Tim? Oh, you merit now. No. <laughs> <laughs> I messed it up. No question. Yes. Uh, uh, this for council, uh, it, the future agenda item E, so this will kind of take in some of that uh, that's requested by Commissioner Katz. Yes, update? Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Five o'clock. <laughs> uh, which day are you, did you request? Next, next city commission meeting. And that is going to be 21st. 21st. Okay. Have a client? Yes. All right. And one of the things I'd like to put on the future agenda items is, you know, a certain procedure that the commission and myself have regarding putting items, you know, not, you know, skipping future agenda items, you know. Is kind of in the sense of with Commissioner Costello's item for his ordinance uh, regarding uh, lobbyists on it for advisory members. If we can have a policy that we can agree to that if we're changing a, an ordinance that it goes to new business first, so that you know we all have the discussion on it before we see the ordinance and staff puts in a time to prepare the ordinance. It is I have no problem with that. No, you don't no. have a problem with it. No. So. That's, a, That's for a city staff, I guess, to understand. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. No need to put it on future agenda then. Do I have a second? Yes, second. All right, all those in yep. favor? Yep. Yep. Adjourned.